What's up, Dirt Tracks viewers? Luke here bringing you guys another walk around video of a brand new model that showed up here at the Dirt Tracks World headquarters just yesterday. Before I go any further though, I just wanna say, make sure you watch at the very end of this video and I'll give you some details on a giveaway that we're gonna do. Um, so make sure you watch all the way to the end and don't give up halfway through. Why would you give up halfway through? We got all kinds of cool information. On this unit right here, Polaris's 2022 Sportsman 1000 High Lifter. You, you just gotta look at this thing and you know that it's nuts. I mean, there are a lot of uh, mud specific ATVs out there uh, and a lot of them look really aggressive, but there's something about this vehicle that just looks beyond aggressive, I guess would be the right way to say it. It just looks, honestly, the word that comes to mind when I see this, when I first saw this thing was that it looks ridiculous. I know there's tons of guys out there who just absolutely love playing in the mud. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not necessarily one of them. I don't, I don't hate it. I'm just not crazy about getting mud in every orifice of my body. So this may not be the vehicle I'd buy, but I know that this is a super popular model and I'm looking forward to testing it. Uh, I like to see how far these things can go. I've watched all the videos of you guys with your super modified bikes and AJ's modified mud racer, um, but I like to take one of these out in stock form and see just how far they can go. So. This one arrived here, as I said yesterday, it's dusty. It hasn't really been ridden other than just up and down the road a little bit, but we haven't taken it out anywhere. This is exactly how it was delivered. And I just wanna give you guys a quick overview of what this thing's all about. What does it have that's different than a regular sportsman? And uh, what do we like, what do we dislike about it? So for starters, obviously this is a 1000. It's the standard 1000 motor that's on all Sportsman 1000 ATVs. You got 85 horsepower more than enough for what you're doing here though i know nobody who buys a bike like this is just going to leave it stock you always do something to it so 85 horsepower is a pretty darn good starting point for whatever you're going to do to it later now this vehicle as you can see now th this is one of the weird things about this vehicle i think anyway when you look at it it doesn't look like it's lifted um, most mud running atvs will be lifted and they look lifted this one doesn't it has 13 and a half inches of ground clearance, and that is courtesy of stiffer springs that raise the, the vehicle up. But it doesn't, like the gap between the fender and the tire doesn't look like it's big enough. Um, so here's a little result of that. And I think what's happened here is Polaris hasn't necessarily put a lift kit in it. They've just jacked the springs up. So it only has 7.4 inches of front travel and 6.7 inches of rear travel, which is not as much as a regular Sportsman 1000 has. So there's something going on there. I suspect it's because this distance isn't enough um, and they've had to limit that somehow so that you're not obviously hitting these gigantic tires and tearing your fenders off. So that's something to consider, but you know, these are very specialized vehicles. It's one thing about these mud vehicles is that they are extremely specialized, designed to do one thing extremely well. In some cases, I recommend, if you're gonna be somebody who goes in the mud a lot, but also trail rides, to buy the mud version, take the mud tires off, put on a more multi-purpose set of tires, and that would give you a perfect of both worlds. You get the snorkels, you get all that extra stuff for free, essentially. In this case, that's not my recommendation. If you wanna ride in the mud, buy this. If you wanna do mud and trail, buy a regular Sportsman 1000, put a lift kit in it, buy some new tires, that's your best bet. So something to consider for this vehicle, that's my recommendation. Now uh, let's talk about some more specifics. I gotta have notes here because there's a lot of specific things about this. It does have arched A-arms front and rear, which is something the Sportsman 1000 has anyway. So that's not really new, um, but it is obviously more important on this bike than anything else. Comes with the bumpers. So these are sort of not like, like upgrade bumpers. I'm gonna say aftermarket, but they're not aftermarket. They're Polaris factory upgrade bumpers. Comes with plastic racks as usual. Um, this is a premium version or considered to be a premium version. So it comes with the cool cut and sew seat. I always like these seats. Polaris does an excellent job. They look really good, but they're also functional. You know, the different materials grip differently uh, and that's really smart on their part. I personally love this color scheme with the sort of gray digital camo on the matte-ish gray um, bodywork. I think it looks, like I said, striking. It just, when I see it, it's like, whoa, what is that thing? Um, a little interesting one up here. Polaris doesn't even list this on their website when you look for the specs on this vehicle, but it has, I mean, I would refer to this as a snowmobile mountain bar, but uh, it's become very popular for guys who ride ATVs in the mud to put this auxiliary handle on here when you're you know, standing off the side of this ATV, you can get right out here like this. Super useful in the mud on an ATV. This is a really smart inclusion. Um, so that's something to consider. You got your standard. This is actually the uh, Scrambler 
gauge pod because it doesn't have a headlight in it. The Sportsman gauge pod has a headlight. This is from the Scrambler. Your standard gauge though um, gives you all the information you're possibly going to need. You got your regular one lever braking, typical Polaris switch gear. I got to point this out though. This is something really cool. This right here is your integrated winch controls, but it's wrapped in rubber and sealed, which I think is super cool. Um, I've always praised Polaris for their integrated winch controls right here. Uh, this is taking it one step even further with putting that rubber gasket on it to help keep mud out of the switch itself. Question, why do they need it on the winch control and not on all the rest of the controls? I don't know, but they don't apparently. So you get your rubber covered winch control right there. That's cool. And of course that runs a Polaris 3,500 pound winch with synthetic cable that is mounted to this Polaris kind of lists this as like a mud specific front bumper. It's actually really unique if you look at how it mounts uh, up here, as opposed to mounting down below and kind of just protecting the front of the bike, it actually mounts right solid on the top. So you could, I mean, you could literally bash into something really hard with this and it would just stop the, the ATV. Um, you've also got, you know, your, your skid plating pieces down here that are standard. This is all heavy duty, um, but this bumper, winch bumper, is super trick for another reason. It's super high. So your winch is actually mounted way up here, not way down here. And your cable is up here as well. Your fair lead control is up here, which means when you're buried up to here in the mud, you don't have to reach all the way down to get to your winch stuff. And that means you don't have to carry your cable up on your handlebars the way a lot of guys do. They keep the cable up here so they don't have to reach in to get it. You don't have to do that. It's right here. That's a really smart move on Polaris's part in terms of setting this vehicle up um, to be deep mud ready. That's a really good inclusion. And as I said, this bumper is ridiculously tough. So, you know, there's not much going to get in your way that's going to stop you. Obviously, one of the most visual things on this vehicle that, that differentiates it from a regular sportsman is this whole panel up here. And I mean, it's not hard to understand what's, what is this. This is just a cover. Uh, and let's see if we can pop this off and show you what's underneath. So under here, you've got your high mount rad. Now, one thing I'd like to point out about this is that Polaris doesn't do a high mount rad like a lot of other companies does. This entire rack section up here has been redesigned specifically for the high mount rad and fans. So this isn't just like a regular rack with the high mount system bolted to it or a replacement for the upper rack. This is an upper rack completely designed for this purpose, just like this. You know, you've got all your fuses up here in a sealed container, easy to access. Um, obviously your snorkels are up here and uh, that's that's pretty good. Now I would say those snorkels are on the low side. Um, I know a, comp a lot of the competition, the snorkels are actually up almost above the handlebars, but these ones are you know perfectly in a good spot and they would be super easy to extend to. They're just little um, gear clamps here. So you could easily pop them up as high as you want them. One thing to note though, your rad is massive. It's all the way across here. It's big and it has reverse uh, mounted fans. So the fans are less likely to get clogged and, uh, and get screwed up, more likely to keep cool, which is great. The other thing about this is that it's super easy to clean your rad. You can get a hose in here and you can clean all around. And um, that's a big one. That's obviously one of the main reasons why you high mount it, but also uh, it's just a benefit. And I think that, you know, that's a benefit for anybody who wants uh, who wants an ATV that's gonna get muddy, even if you're not gonna be buried in the mud, this is a super handy you know, place for your rad to be mounted, as opposed to way down underneath where it's guaranteed to get clogged with mud. I guess the next thing we'll cover real quick is, let me just throw this back on, I'll just set it here, won't bother attaching it. Um, the other thing that we need to talk about that is gonna stand out huge and is a huge differentiator between this vehicle and a regular sportsman is obviously these tires. Now these tires, I gotta get this right, there's a lot of numbers thrown around here. These are 30 inch by 9.5 Outlaw 2s on 14 inch aluminum wheels. 30 inch tires from the factory. That is one serious tire setup. They do not ride very well. They're in fact, they ride terrible. They, they'll chatter your teeth out on hard ground. They don't handle that well on the trail to be perfectly honest, but boy, do they go through the mud and that's what this thing's for. So what you're seeing with this vehicle is the epitome of a specialized vehicle that has trade-offs to do what it does. Yes, there are multi-purpose vehicles out there, mud ATVs. There are multi-purpose ones out there that can do both. This one is 
specifically designed and makes some pretty major um, compromises for its mud abilities. And these tires are a big one. Interestingly, these are not beadlock wheels. And you could argue that maybe 85 horsepower isn't enough to spin a tire on a beadlock, that, or spin a tire, sorry, on a rim. That's probably true. But the way these tires are, the way that you're cranking on them, you're in muddy conditions, hitting stumps, roots, rocks, whatever. I personally think a beadlock is, especially on a vehicle this serious, is just a must. Whether, you, whether you're gonna need it or not, whether you can actually use it or not is irrelevant. This vehicle should have beadlocks on it, so Polaris can improve on that in my opinion for sure. But they've included a seriously gnarly set of tires, 30 inch, that's as big as on like a, like a Razor Pro XP almost, that, that's insane uh, for a stock ATV. Polaris does a really good job with their running boards. They've got lots of holes in them to drain mud and water. Um, the raised foot pegs are not super raised, not super aggressive, but they do work really well and, uh, and keep your feet in there. All of this extra serration though in here is what's gonna keep your feet on the running board. So that's super handy for a, a mud ATV. And then this section here, this is really aggressive grip. Um, and that's great for when you're using that, that mud bar, auxiliary mud bar and the handlebars. Uh, you can get right off the side of this thing. Just hang your body out as far as you can get and you won't slip off ever, which is fantastic. That pretty much covers all the specifics of this thing. You know, little things like you've got your 12 volt outlet here, that's standard Polaris stuff. Polaris's all now have a charging jack hidden around them somewhere. If you want to keep it on a battery tender, that's really cool. That's something that nobody else does. Uh, something you can't see about this ATV is that it actually has different gearing in high and low range. So this is not geared the same as a regular Sportsman 1000. It has its own unique gearing setup specific for mud running. Obviously that would be 100% necessary if you're gonna put 30 inch tires on this thing. If it had stock gearing, it would feel horrible especially when you got it bogged down in the mud, it would have no torque. So that's really good on Polaris's part. You know, there's not a lot of other things to talk about, except that you've got a, a base platform that is a Polaris Sportsman 1000. You know, you got your hitch receiver back here. They all have that, which is great. A little storage compartment under, under the rack back here that, you know, they, they say it's waterproof, but I think if I was gonna be burying this thing in the water, I wouldn't keep anything important in there personally. Um, Polaris' shifter works great, as it always does, forward and back, straight line shifter, love that. Uh, there's no auxiliary lighting on this, probably not a bad idea. I don't know that you would really need a lot of auxiliary lighting, though maybe a light bar up top on the bar would look cool. Um, that's all up to you though, and, and Polaris probably is concerned about including auxiliary lighting on something that's just gonna be underwater all the time. But you've got some places for switches right here already in the, the gauge pod, and it's a pretty easy, process to add a light and uh, include and install the switches so that's uh, that's pretty sweet really that's that's all i got to say about this thing right now i mean i'm looking forward to riding it as i said earlier getting muddy and getting buried in the mud isn't like my first choice but if you're going to do it my philosophy is if you're going to get muddy just get really really muddy like just throw caution to the wind and have it everywhere so that's what i'm planning to do on this vehicle i'm going to get it ridiculously muddy and myself and uh, probably just throw my clothes out when i'm done speaking of clothes you've made it to the end of this walk around video and uh, we appreciate that in the beginning i told you that we would have a surprise for you or, or there was a little i don't know let's call it a contest it's not really uh, if you made it to the end the contest is this comment down below uh, what you think the best mud ATV in the industry is, or maybe go even more specific. What are some of the best mud features that a stock mud specific vehicle needs to have? If you're gonna buy a stock ATV that's designed for running in the mud, what does it have to include? And what are some things that a lot of them include that you don't really need? Comment that, let us know what you think, and we will randomly pick one of the comments and you'll win a Dirt Tracks uh, Nation swag pack um, hat and t-shirt, so uh, make sure you leave those comments. We do read them, we appreciate them, we love hearing from you guys, we love hearing your thoughts, we love hearing your you know, opinions on what we're doing and, and suggestions a lot of times. Uh, we try our best to read all of them and respond as quickly as possible. Um, we appreciate constructive criticism, not just blatant criticism, but uh, we do listen. So make sure you comment, 
Hope you guys enjoyed this video. There's lots more coming from us. Uh, we got more new vehicles that we're gonna do some walk arounds on, stuff coming all season. And of course the new season is coming up here really soon. So make sure you stay tuned. Uh, check out the, the uh, Dirt Tracks YouTube channel. As I mentioned, there's always new stuff going up there. You don't wanna miss it. Hit that like button if you like this video. Subscribe if you haven't already so you get notifications right away when new videos come up. And uh, we'll see you next time.